The time I sold an illegal substance while on college campus. So for those that have seen my last video that I did called The Time That I Boosted Clothes in Raleigh and Durham, North Carolina, you all know where this story, you know, is at. You understand? For those that haven't, I suggest that you go back and look at that one, right? So, um, you know, I stopped boosting clothes. Um, I got accepted to an HBCU um, school called St. Augustine's College. Now, let me take it back a little bit. While I was boosting clothes, I ran into this kid, right? This kid I went to school with in high school. And I must say, the kid wasn't the most sharpest pencil in a batch. You know, I, I can go as far as to say that he was just a dummy, you know? And I was asking him what he was doing with his life. And he was like, yo, I got accepted to college. And I'm like, who accepted you? You understand? Like this cat, you know, I think he scored like a 400 on an SAT. You know, they give you 300 points for just signing your name, right? So he was like, yeah, St. Augustine's. And I was like, you know what? Let me try to see if I can get into St. Augustine's because if they let this fool in, I know I could get in, right? So this is what made me fill out the application. The application fee at that time, I'm pretty sure that it's way more than what it is now. But the application fee was like $35. And, you know, I mailed it out. And a couple weeks later, I got accepted. So I didn't go to school in the in the fall semester. I went to spring. So I had to, I, I started going to school like in when winter break when they when, when you go uh, go back from winter break so it was like uh what was it it was like uh january or something like that i f forgot but anyway it was like around december january whatever right so um prior to me you know going to, to school or whatever you know i filled out i forgot to say mention this i filled out financial aid or whatever have you um i already knew off the rip that financial aid wasn't gonna cover everything. It didn't cover my room and board. It didn't cover my books. It didn't cover my meal ticket. For those that know, you know, uh, went to school or graduated, whatever have you, you know what a meal ticket is. You know, it's that ticket where you, and that's it's, it's pretty much your 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 student ID where you go to the student union. Most times, the cafeteria is located inside the student union where you can get your breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Right. So, you know, I went to go see the guidance counselor they assigned to me and we wound up filling out some Pell Grants and student loans and stuff like that or whatever have you. Some of the grants, you know, I didn't have to pay back and there was some loans that I had to pay back. The grants I didn't have to pay back, the loans I had to. Um, she, she signed me up for work study. Work study is when, you know, you pay your debt off, your loan off, you know what I'm saying? So... Um, I was assigned, uh, my work study was inside my dormitory. The dormitory that I lived in was called Lynch Hall. Now, for some odd reason, I got accepted to college and now I'm in college and everything. So I just want to lay it out to you all. Um, for some odd reason, in Lynch Hall, they would put all the knuckleheads in one dormitory. Like, there was another uh, dormitory, if I'm not mistaken, called Atkinson or something like that. It started with an A. That was right next to, to to our dorm and all of those guys were like the the geeks and the pretty boys and shit like that the dudes in lynch hall were the 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 criminals <laughs> you know what i'm saying i mean yo it was just crazy you know what i'm saying we sold drugs you know and at that time i wasn't selling drugs it was people that was selling selling drugs in the dorm you know what i'm saying i never forget it like it bugged me out here i am this is my first week i'm trying to do right in school you know i'm going to school back and forth but I don't have books, you understand? Like, my room and board is covered. My my meal ticket for me to, to eat, you know, breakfast, lunch, and dinner in the cafeteria um, is covered. Everything is covered except for my books. So I'm going back and forth to class without books, right? I'm trying to do right. But as I'm, you know, like going back and forth to class, I'm seeing dudes that's, that's attending college, like that's there, but not going to class. And I see why, because they're literally making money, more money, you know what I'm saying, than they ever did working at a job or, or, or going to school, period. You know, you, of course you don't make no money going to school, but you understand where I'm coming from. So, I mean, the dudes were selling weed, selling crack at that time. Um, there was a, 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 a project right across the street from St. Augustine's. Um, years back, you know, they gutted it out and now it's affordable housing and then it's kind of like middle class 
But back then when I was going to class, uh, going to school in St. Augustine's, it was all hood. So the crackheads and different people that lived in the projects and other people that lived in Raleigh would actually, you know, go come to our 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 cla uh, class, our um, school, St. Augustine's, to buy drugs. No lie. Um, our best days were Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Those were the, the party slash club days. You understand? So every Thursday, I'm not lying. I'm not making this up. I'm not. I'm not embellishing on the truth at all. Every Thursday, the way our dormitory was situated, we had a gate like in front of our dormitory and then like you could park on that side road right there. It used to be cars lined up strictly to buy drugs. So here I am, I'm walking back and forth. This is my, I'm going on my second, third week. I'm seeing this shit happen. I'm, I'm observing everything, you know what I'm saying? I'm seeing drug transaction, you know what I'm saying? People giving you know the other people drugs and those people are giving you know the the guy that sold drugs money for the drugs you understand and i'm saying to myself god damn i'm broke i i know that when i was in school i always told myself to stay away from drugs i remember that damn commercial and nancy reagan you know the first lady um of the president at that time you know back in the days ronald reagan she she had this commercial and she would be like if someone else offers you drugs just say no and then they had this infamous commercial you know what i'm saying um and the reason why i'm saying this is because every time i thought about selling drugs though these two commercials would be stuck in my head and they would play over and over and over again they had this infamous commercial where it was an egg and the guy would be like this is the egg you know this is your brain and then he would crack the egg and throw it in a frying pan. And then, and then he'll say, this is your brain on drugs. You understand? So I was adamant about not selling drugs. But at the same time, here I am. I'm in school. I'm broke. I don't have any money. You know, I had a girlfriend, of course, the same one that, you know, bought me those clothes, got me those clothes, boots and clothes and shit. And, you know, she would come up, you know, on the weekends because she went to cosmetology school Monday through Friday. So I was I was on my own. You know, I didn't want to um, work at a fast food restaurant. I'm just giving it to you raw. You understand? Because I didn't want to fuck up my, my, my style. You know, I, I had a motherfucking, you know, an image to uphold. I wasn't working at no motherfucking fast food restaurant, even though Bojangles, it was Bojangles Kentucky Fried Chicken. Uh, what else was up uh, right up the street walking distance that is from the camp from college campus you understand kentucky fried chicken and uh, what was it cookout so i could easily went to work at one of those damn places you understand work study didn't pay me you know work study is 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 when you worked and you would pay off your loan so you weren't getting any cash off of that you understand so yeah i wasn't i wasn't trying to work you know i was just trying to just make some money in order to to, to stay afloat you know the cafeteria the food was okay sometimes, you know, most of the time it was all right, you know, but they still had it where you could only get a certain amount, you know what I'm saying? Let's say, for example, if, like for dinner, it was spaghetti, you know, I could go up there probably two two times and that's it, you know, second or third plate and that's it, you know what I'm saying? After that, they're going to be on some shit like, nah, you can't get any more. And plus the cafeteria will close at seven o'clock. For those that know about the dorm life, y'all know exactly what I'm talking about. College is very expensive. You understand? I mean, let let I mean, shall I go on? I mean, I needed toiletries. I needed um, deodorant, um, toilet tissue, uh, paper towels, um, towels, um, uh, sheets, uh, bed sheets. Um, uh, the list goes on. And then you know, of course, I need to wash clothes at the end of the week, and I had to go to the laundromat to wash clothes. And you need money to do that. So I was fucked up i didn't have money for books or none of that shit and i damn for sure wasn't trying to work at no fast food restaurant so i said to myself you know what fuck it i see what these guys doing and it's it's what they're doing is just easy they just handing people the drugs and they be about their way you know what i'm saying i i, I played paid close attention and saw other people that were out there such as this guy named s his weaknesses, he was just too bold and arrogant. He would just go up to the car and act like, you know, drugs was perfectly legal to sell. And I said to myself, you know what? If I if I get a chance, an opportunity to sell any type of drugs around this motherfucker, nobody wouldn't know what I'm doing. I would be straight like on some 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 James Bond shit. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, um, I ran into a cat 
that I was cool with, another cat that I was cool with in high school, and this cat, I call him Mar. He sold drugs, I'm not gonna lie. He's in the 10th grade. And um, I told him, yo man, I need, I need, I need money. And he was like, well, what you wanna do? You could do crack or you could do marijuana, weed. I said, yo man, I ain't trying to do no crack. Because at that time there was like, I don't know if it if it is like that now, but there was some stiff penalties given out, you know, um, with just having a crack rock on you. So I was like, you know what, let me just do the weed, you know what I'm saying? Let's just try that for now. So um Mar, he he actually went to Fayetteville State, you know what I'm saying? So he drove down, he picked me up and drove drove back up to Fayetteville, went to go see this guy, Jamaican cat, and um, you know, the guy was like, How much you need? Mar um paid for it, you know, so I he fronted it for me. You know, he front front the weed and it was like two ounces. And um it was I never forget it. The Jamaican dude had a big ass bucket of that. Like I'm, I'm talking about a trash bag full of like one of them big ass heavy duty trash, trash, not trash bags, trash cans in his house. You know what I'm saying? And he was like, yo, just just bag it up and weigh it, put the scale and you know, make sure it's two ounces, da da da. So I get it, you know, I go go back to the to the um to the dorm. I'm bagging it up in nicks and dimes. I don't know what the fuck I'm doing, you know what I'm saying? Um, I'm taking out branches, I'm taking out seeds, you know, I'm trying to be real meticulous about how I bag this shit up, not knowing that I'm losing money, you know what I'm saying? And and then at the same time, you know, I'm 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 smoking too. You know what I'm saying? I'm smoky from Friday. So I'm, 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 I'm just disobeying one of the 10 crack commandments that Biggie Smalls put out, you know, never get high on your own supply. And he got that from Scarface with when Makai Pfeiffer told Scarface, never get high on your own supply. So I'm just disobeying that rule, right? I'm committing a sin when it comes to drug dealing. That's one of the 10 crack commandments, right? So I get out there, I start selling, right? Now, Smart thing about me is I never kept the marijuana or the, you know, I guess you would say drugs in my dorm. Matter of fact, the, the person that I, I was rooming the, the, the room, my roommate, you know what I'm saying, was the president of St. Augustine's, the student president or some shit like that. And he always used to talk about how, you know, he needs to, he, he wants to clean up Lynch Hall because he saw, he literally saw, like, you couldn't, like, avoid it, like, People were just, kids were just bold selling drugs out there, right? And he was like, yo, I want to clean up Lich Hall and this and that and so forth. But you know what? Even though he wanted to clean it up, he never snitched, right? So I took my weed. It was a risk that I took, you know what I'm saying? But it was smart. I used to take my weed, you know what I'm saying? Nicks and bags and all of that, right? And I would go to the student union and put it inside the men's bathroom. You know, lift the panel up in the ceiling and put it right there. So whenever I needed to re-up on whatever, I would just grab it. You know, because while in the process of me actually selling marijuana, weed out there, nicks and dimes and all of that, slowly but surely people were getting popped, right? So I said, you know what? If I ever get caught, I'm just going to have a couple of dime bags, uh, uh, you know, dime, nicks and dimes on me. So... I, all I got to do is just be like, that's my personal. I smoked that. I just bought that or some shit like that. It would never be a situation where they would raid my room and they would find ounces everywhere and all the rest of that shit. You know what I'm saying? Scales and all the type of paraphernalia that would let them know that, oh yeah, this, this guy is out here selling drugs, right? So that's how I used to do it. You know, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, it would be, you know, club night. You know, I would go out there. I Another dude that I was cool with, you know, um, he was selling weed too, and we would go out there and we would make our money, and then after that, we would dip out and go to the club. You understand? And yeah, true indeed. You know, the marijuana, the the the, the nicks and dimes, it wasn't great money. It, it really wasn't. You know, it was enough money for me to get oodles and noodles, straight up. Um, my, you know, favorite cereal, you know, fruity pebbles and shit like that. I, I had a um. A portable TV inside my room. Just little stupid shit. You know what I'm saying? I was able to buy a pair, of, a, another new pair, of brand new sneakers and shit like that. It wasn't like big time money, right? So you remember the guy I mean, you know, I, I told you about named S, you know, arrogant, bold, you know, thinking that he could go out there and, and selling drugs was perfectly legal. You know, um, he was out there and that was pretty much our competition. You know, he used to cut us off all the time. We go into a car, this this motherfucker run up to to the, to the same car that we at 
I'm at or my, my man is at and be on some shit like, yo, I got you, you know what I'm saying? Nah, 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 I, I, I do it for nine, you know what I'm saying? That dime bag, nah, I do it for nine and shit like that. So we used to, the, ne- the motherfuckers used to piss us off, you know what I'm saying? So uh, I knew that this was the um, beginning of the ending when um, some shit happened, you know, to S. Um, one day um, they found him, I say, like, it's a, so it was, if you all went to HBCU, they all basically the same. They're dead in the hood. Most of them are dead in the hood. You know what I'm saying? It's it's like the projects, and then you got the houses that's, like, around the projects. So they found him in one of those houses, you know what I'm saying, with his head blown off. You understand? I'm not making this up. I'm not embellishing on the truth, on the truth whatsoever. I knew it was the beginning of the ending when that happened. So, you know, it was on the news, you know, and they say college student found dead with you know bullet to his head blah 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 right so to be real with you you know i felt kind of bad but then i felt a sense of relief because he wasn't out there anymore and you know it was fair game you know most of the other people that was out there selling they 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 were kind of like laid back and 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 and, and reserved you know what i'm saying not as reserved as i was and my man was you know what i'm saying but they were a little bit more reserved you know um after that happened they wind up putting two undercover cops inside our dorm that we didn't even know. You know what I'm saying? They were recording us and um, they had people, you know, intel snitches and shit like that. Letting people know, you know, who was selling crack, who was selling weed or whatever have you. So little by little people were getting pinched. You know what I'm saying? Like getting hemmed up by the cops, you know, until one day um, they raided. it. They raided the college. No lie. And... It just so happened that night before I left, and I don't know what it was. I think I went somewhere with my girl or some shit, and um, I got a hotel room or some shit like that. I can't remember. All I know, the day that it happened, it was like an af- in the afternoon, and um, I was looking at TV, and I, and it was the news, and they showed all the dudes in handcuffs and I was like yo that's Scotty B that's Ricky that's da 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 I knew all of them and I'm telling you if I was out there that if I didn't leave that night before I would have been out there and I would have been handcuffed along with them straight up so all of them got got taken away they and and, and yo it was on the news it was a, a raid on our college campus Lynch Hall got raided I mean, they went in everybody's dorm room and just searched the whole fucking place. And like I told you before, you know, I hid my weed in the student union men's bathroom in the ceiling. So I went back, I think about two, three days later, you know, I let the shit die down. You know what I'm saying? Out there. Um, I went back and I went to um, to, to retrieve my, my, my drugs and it was there. Lo and behold, it was there. So, you know, I was still selling here and there, whatever have you, but not as much as I was, you know, prior to it getting raided. Um, and then I think it was spring break or summer break or something like that, you know, um, came up and, you know, I left. So here I am now I'm selling weed, but I'm like, really, I have a beep and I'm just answering, you know, my beeps, right? When somebody wants some 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 weed, you know, uh, my girl is in cosmetology school, so the chicks that's in cosmetology school they want weed too. So it was a pretty good, decent, you know, thing I had going on until one day I got sloppy, and I'm not gonna lie, um, I didn't want to rent a hotel to, to to bang out my girl, and um, we wind up going behind this building that was located in a like I ain't gonna lie, it was like a white community. And you know how people are, you know, neighborhood watch. And you, I ain't gonna lie, you know, white people are nosy. So I guess they felt as though that we weren't up to no good. I, all I wanted to do was just bust a nut. So, you know, we parked behind this building. Um, and um, we about to have sex. And I put my marijuana on the dashboard. And, you know, I always said to myself, if I got caught, I would never throw in a car. I would never take my, my my drugs and throw it under the car seat. I see a bunch of lights. I do the same shit that I said that I wasn't gonna do, which is take the drugs and throw it under my car seat. Of course, the cops saw that. You know, they get us out. You know, um, 
my 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 girl is 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 acting like she's in a movie. She's crying. She's telling the cops that I'm a good kid. I go to school. You know, they asked me for my ID. It just so happened I have my driver's license and my student ID. I show my student ID to let them know, yo, I'm in school. You know, you understand? So they go for the, you know, sob story. You know, they they're like, okay, well, you in school. You know, people make mistakes or whatever have you, and um. We're going to write you a ticket. We're going to let you go. We're going to take this marijuana, though. You know what I'm saying? You got bagged the fuck up. We're going to let you go, and we're going to lessen the amount that, that we, we we retrieved. So I think it was like less than a half ounce, and they put it all together. They didn't like ha they didn't say it was nicks and dimes on this ticket, right? So I go to I go to court, and um I let them know, you know, I, I'm a weed head. That, that was just my own supply that I get high and shit like that. Make the long story short. They had me go to this drug class, you know, where I had to stand up and, you know, give them my name and, you know, all the rest of that shit. Um, that was the first time I ever attended or did something like that, but it wouldn't be the last. You understand? So, yeah, man, that's about it. You know, the moral of the story is that fast money ain't good money. It's just not. You know, do you remember the story, like, the when you were younger... They talked about the, the tortoise and the hare, the turtle against the rabbit, or the, yeah, the, the, the rabbit. Um, and, uh, you know, the the, the, the the rabbit was ego, you know, arrogant, egotistical and arrogant and thought, hey, you know what? The turtle, he's slow as shit. I could take a nap. You know, I'm still going to win the race and this and that and so forth. And lo and behold, what happened? The turtle won the race. And this is the point that I'm trying to make to you. Just look at the turtle being a nine to five and the rabbit being, you know, street, you know, uh, a hustle, you know, illegal hustle. And it's crazy. Let's talk. Let's let's say crack. You know what I'm saying? So you're, you're trying to make it to the finish line. You're trying to get that nice car, that house, the nice clothes and all the rest of that shit. Right. So you say to yourself, you know what? I can't get there working that nine to five, being that turtle. It's going to take me longer. It's going to be double or triple the amount of time that it would take me if I get out there and I sell that drugs, right? So guess what? You get out there, you sell crack, you sell whatever illegal substance there is, you know what I'm saying? Um, you make $30,000, $50,000 that month. And you say to yourself, you know what? I'm going to buy that house now. I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. And that next day, you get pinched. That next day, you get hemmed up by the cops. And that thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollars that you said that you were gonna, you know, take and, you know, put a down payment on a house, or a car, or whatever hell you want it, you got to take that thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollars and put it towards lawyer, lawyer fees. And now you're hustling backwards because you got to get yourself out of that situation. And then you get yourself out of that situation. And most criminals, most drug dealers do the same dumb shit. They get themselves out of that situation and they get go back on the corner and try to re-up and, 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 and get that $30,000, $50,000 all over again only to get hemmed up on the same fucking block that you got hemmed up on the first time. While at 9 to 5, that 9 to 5 goes to work, comes home, goes to work, comes home, goes to work, comes home. Yeah, true indeed. It took him 10, 20 years, but he made it to that finish line. And he didn't have to put money on lawyer fees. He ain't had to spend a certain amount of years in jail. So the moral of the story, man, is that if, 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 if you can, if that's what you're into, you know what I'm saying? Attend college. Get that higher education. You understand? And then after that, whatever you want to do, you know, career-wise, entrepreneur, you know, um, trade or whatever have you do it for those that don't want to go to school you know there's trades you know that you can you can actually go to school for a certain amount of months or class ten class for a certain amount of months and you can you know after you attend that class those classes whatever you could be a a, a mechanic a carpenter a auto mechanic i said a mechanic a, 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 a carpenter a mechanic a plumber an electrician you can make money like that the legal, in other words, what I'm saying is doing things in this day and time, making your money the illegal way in this day and time with big brother, big sister, big mama, 
and Big Daddy and Uncle Sam is looking at you, all eyes are on you. It ain't the good way to go, bro. It's just not. And I managed, I, I managed to make it out of trouble by the skin of my teeth, man. And I'm not gonna lie, man. I'm, I'm being honest with you. I'm glad that that shit happened to me. I'm glad that I got um, arrested for that, for the uh, misdemeanor. It was a misdemeanor too. It wasn't a felony on my record. A misdemeanor uh, marijuana charge because right after that, yo, no lie. I was saying to myself, man, weed money ain't shit. All I'm able to do is buy a pair of sneakers, get a hotel room or some shit like that. Crack is where the real money is at. And that's what I was planning on doing until I got arrested. You understand? And what's so crazy is that marijuana that they took, I that, that got fronted. So I had to go to work. Listen to this shit. I had to go to work nine to five in order to pay that money back for those ounces that I got fronted. So think about that. Here I am trying to avoid working and had to go right back to work and i had to pay there was there was money that i had to pay for that ticket and for that class that i had to attend so i was in the negative so yeah man you know it's more stories to come hope you uh enjoyed this one other than that my name is langston 2092 i want you to like comment subscribe definitely share this video